Welcome back to Introduction to Jason with C Sharp. I'm Christopher Harrison, that's Benjamin Lin. In the uh, prior module, we introduced the concept of JSON, talked a little bit about what it is, opened up a huge JSON file and kind of poked at it. But now I think it's a good time to actually start digging in and talking about exactly what makes up a JSON file and what the structure actually consists of. Okay, so in this module, we're gonna talk about what exactly makes up a JSON file. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to cover values, objects, arrays, and then we're going to put those all together because those are all the things that make up a JSON file. So let's start with JSON values. A JSON value can be a string, a number, a boolean, a null, or a more complex value being an object or an array. Okay, and we'll talk about objects and arrays a little bit later. Yeah, okay. so I'm going to give a demo on you know, what is you know, those basic types that I mentioned before. Okay, let's see. So back to that messy school data JSON file. <laughs> we have a string. We can tell that's a string because it's surrounded by quotation marks. Okay, so just like any programming language. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have a number. And you can see there's no quotation marks, so if, it, if there were quotation marks, it would still be a string, but there's not. Okay. We have a Boolean, and those more complex values, objects, and arrays. Uh, we'll talk about them later, but just know for now that an object is indicated by a curly brace, mm -hmm. and an array is indicated by a bracket. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about JSON objects. Mm -hmm. So a JSON object is a collection of name value pairs that are separated by columns. Okay. Just like we see there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's encapsulated by curly braces and each of the pairs is separated by commas. Okay. So let's go through a quick demo of what a JSON object looks like. So here's a very simple example. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, here are the curly braces that indicate a JSON object. We have name value pairs. The colon represents a name value pair, and each pair is separated by a comma. I like that little thing that Visual Studio does there of, of having the, the key or the name in blue and then the value in red. It kind of nice little separation there. I like it. Okay. So here's a slightly more complex example. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the curly braces representing an object. This time we have three name value pairs. The first uh, being type, second being wheel, and third being color. Type is just a string. Wheels is a number. And colors, it's an array, as shown by the brackets. And we'll get into those later. OK. And lastly, here's a even more complicated example. Still, still, it's an object as shown by the curly braces. It has three name value pairs. The first is a string. The second, oh, what's this? Curly braces. Oh, wait, that's an object. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, uh, so I guess the value for the second name value pair is an object that has its own name value pairs. And so an object can have an object. So I can create a hierarchy just like I would to, to represent more complex. So if I had, uh, let's say, for example, just like you have here, you've got the store, and the store has an owner. That owner could be an object. I can do that inside of JSON. Yeah, and that's the amazing part of JSON. Mm -hmm. And you know, the last one, we have an array. And let's actually, let's actually get into arrays right now. I think that's perfect. Kind of a nice little segue there. So JSON arrays. So JSON arrays, what are they? JSON arrays are values that are enclosed by brackets, and each value is separated by a comma. OK. It's a bit easier than objects because uh, it's just mm -hmm. you know, a list of things. So let's go see some examples of JSON arrays. Examples of lists of things. So I'm opening up my Visual Studio file, and I am going to see my first array example. And as indicated by the brackets, we have a JSON array. And in this example, it's an array of four strings. And each string is separated by 
commas, and we know it's a string because of the quotation marks. Now here's a slightly uh, different example, still pretty basic. It's uh, an array of numbers. And here is an array showing the days of the week. Mm -hmm. And here's a slightly more complex array. We can tell it's an array by the brackets at the top. And what's within this array? Oh, curly braces. It must be an object. OK, so my array can be a collection of, of anything, including objects. Correct. OK. And these objects all have three name value pairs, as we learned in the prior teaching of objects. And the values for these name value pairs can, are strings, booleans, and numbers. Yep. OK. So my name is Apple in stock, and then the, uh, the, the price or, or the number uh, that was there. Yeah, OK. Nice. So how about, you know, bring it all together. So how about kind of a more real world example there, that, that, that huge list of, of classes. Let's kind of go back in and break that down. OK, so the key concepts to get from this module is that mm -hmm. a JSON value can be anything. It can be an object, it can be an array, or it can be a simple type as a string or a number. And furthermore, JSON objects and arrays can contain other JSON objects and arrays. So that mm -hmm. is how a JSON file expands to encapsulate all the data that your application needs. So let's go back to that giant messy JSON uh, data file we and had in the beginning. Hopefully make it a little less messy now. So at the top, we have an object because there are curly braces. And let's see what's inside this object. We have three name value pairs, a name, an address, and a list of courses. So the first two just being strings, strings, and the third being an array, as indicated by the square bracket. So what is this an array of? We can see here there's a curly brace, so that means that there are objects within this array. And within this object, we have a few name value pairs, a subject, a teacher, and a student. Subject is just a string. Teacher is another object, this object having a name, an age, and is present. And mm -hmm. students is an array of objects, objects again because of the curly braces. And each object has a name, an age, and is present. So my array could contain an object, and that object that it contains could actually have another array. So I really can model whatever my data structure happens to be, that JSON is just that flexible. Correct. So okay. if we look back to this file, all it's representing is a school with a name, an address, and a list of courses. Mm -hmm. Within each course, there is a subject, a teacher, and a list of students. OK, that's perfect. I like it. And it's, uh, it's easy to read and easy to use. I like it. OK, cool. So that's how a JSON file is structured. That's how the JSON file looks. I guess the next step is to actually start creating JSON files. Correct. Yeah. All right. And we'll do that in the next module. Yeah. All right. Sounds perfect. We'll see you guys in the next module.